Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick2. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play Windwalker Monk, how to perform your rotation in order to do an absolute ton of damage. As I'm sure most of you know, Windwalker is one of the best specs in the entire game right now. Uh, specifically in AoE scenarios, in pure single target, it's middle of the pack, if not a little bit higher than that. But in AoE, this spec ramps up insanely. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to take full advantage of how insanely good this spec is. In this video, I'm only going to be going over the DPS rotation and how to actually press your buttons, what they do, etc. If you're interested in talent, legendary, how to gear, all that stuff, I have that in a separate video, which I'll put a card to up at the top right. Um, but you can also just go on my videos and click on that if you're interested and then come back to the rotation. But if you're only interested in the rotation, this is the video for you. Before I get into it, I'd like to mention that I offer coaching. So if anybody is interested in getting help with their UUI, perfecting their rotation, fixing bad habits, literally anything that you can need help with, I should be able to help you out with that. So if you're interested, please message me over on Discord or email me at nicktubiz at gmail.com. And if this video helps you out, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe for videos similar to this one. Comment down below if there's anything that you'd like to see from me in the future or if there's anything that I missed out on. Um, I'm pretty new to making WoW content, so every little bit helps. One thing I should mention real quick before I get into everything, um, Windwalker Monk, it's not particularly complicated. There's not a ton going on, but there's a lot of little optimizations that you can make that makes a little bit of a difference. So if you're interested in absolutely maximizing your damage getting every little drip of damage that you can get i'm not going to talk about all that stuff because then that then this video would end up being like an hour long but there's a very good source for information like that it is babylonius monk on youtube i will leave a link to his channel down in the description he has a ton of videos of going over very in-depth little optimizations and how to maximize your damage to the fullest and he also has videos of every single boss fight so if you're interested in that uh, please make sure to check out his channel really great stuff here but in the effort of not making this video an hour long i'm not going to talk about all of those little things because ultimately that's only going to result in like at the very very most like five maybe ten percent damage at the very 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 most so i'm just going to be talking about more of the basics and all the stuff that you need to get your feet off the ground as you can see i am kirian in this video i am pretty much only going to be talking about how uh, the rotation works with the Kyrian ability. It's not a massive difference if you are like Necrolord or something. However, Kyrian is significantly better, both both in single target and in AoE. The reason is it just offers more of a burst profile. There's some sims out there that show that Necrolord or whatever is almost as good. I think that's just straight up a lie. Um, I've played both of them and Kyrian, in my opinion, just outperforms way more. So I'd highly recommend being Kyrian, especially because it works both well in it works well both in uh, single target and in aoe and overall it is just insanely powerful truthfully i'm having a little bit of difficulty trying to convey the perfect way to explain the rotation so that you guys can fully understand it and actually implement it in practice um the reason for that is that windwalker monk has kind of a priority system rather than a set in stone rotation and the priority system is a little bit loose because it really depends on what you're doing in that exact moment and it depends a lot on your resource. As Windwalker, you rely on your chi and your energy a lot, and based on what's happening in that exact moment will change what your priority system is. As you can see here, I'll leave a link to this down in the description if you want to read the a very in-depth uh, priority list. As you can see here, the priority list is pretty long because there's a lot of ifs. If less than max chi, if less than max chi, if talented, if this procs, if for chi and about to cap energy. There's a lot of that stuff. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm just going to show you guys me doing the rotation and I'm just going to talk about things. But if you have any questions, just leave it down in the comments and I'll try to answer every question that I can regarding the rotation. But hopefully by just watching me do it and me talking everything through and, and explaining what abilities I'm using and why I'm using them and what the actual priority is in that exact moment, hopefully you can um, understand and then be able to implement that yourself. So before I talk about single target and show my video, uh, let's just talk about what things generally are going to be what you want to be using on cooldown. Mainly you want to be using your big cooldown, so you want to be using Zwen, you want to be using Weapons of Order, and you want to be using Storm Earth and Fire. You want to line these up together. Um, you, generally speaking, want to use these nearly immediately. I'll talk about the ifs and buts in a second, but generally you want to use those immediately. In terms of what abilities do your actual damage, uh, Rising Sun Kick, you want to keep Rising Sun Kick on cooldown pretty much all the time in single target. Same thing with Fist of Fury, but Rising Sun Kick has priority over Fist of Fury um, immediately because of the shorter cooldown. 
And then you want to be using Whirling Dragon Punch on cooldown as well. This isn't going to cost anything, and you can use this. Uh, you can only use this when Fist of Fury and Rising Sun Kick both are on cooldown. Outside of this, you have some other abilities such as Fist of the White Tiger, Chi Burst, Expel Harm that are on shorter cooldowns, and these are going to generate Chi, and you pretty much use them as a whenever you need them, you use them type thing. You have one filler ability being your blackout kick. Pretty much you just use this whenever you can't do other things. Same thing with Tiger Palm, but Tiger Palm is a necessity because you need it in order to generate chi. A couple things that are worth noting, blackout kick reduces the cooldown of your Rising Sun Kick and Fist of Fury by one second whenever you use it. But, and this is this is very important because um, since it is your filler ability, it's actually it actually makes sense it being the filler because it is then reducing the cooldown of your abilities that aren't filler. Um, so that's a pretty interesting interaction there. But also whenever you use Weapons of Order, which is your big carrying ability, this is then going to make it to where your Blackout Kick reduces the cooldown of your affected ability, so Rising Sun Kick and Fist of Fury, by an additional second, meaning that this number then goes to two seconds during Weapons of Order. Another thing worth noting, during Weapons of Order, whenever you use Rising Sun Kick, it is then going to give you a buff that makes it to where your chi, chi costing abilities cost one less chi. The reason this is worth noting, um, by the way, I have a weak ore for it. Highly recommend this. I will leave this down in the description. Uh, the reason that this is worth noting is because when you have this buff, it is going to change how you use your abilities based on if I only have one chi here, I can't use something. But if I go over a certain amount of chi, then I can't use something, stuff like that. Again, you'll see it in the video. Okay, with all that preemptive stuff out of the way, uh, let's get into the actual damage. This video is basically what your single target opener would be in pure single target, but of course, um, I also have another one for AoE, so we'll talk about both of them. Uh, but first off, what I'm going to do here is, I'm assuming this is a raid boss. So in raid, what you can do is um, you can use Expel Harm, which by the way, this just generates chi. It doesn't really do damage, but you use it a lot because it is just... A free ability that generates chi and it is also not going to break your mastery if you don't know what windwalker monk mastery is it basically is just that you don't want to use the same ability twice um you pretty much naturally are weaving in abilities so you don't really need to do anything to facilitate this um but that is worth mentioning but something very good about expel harm is that it just generates chi for free and it doesn't um it helps with your mastery so you don't end up you know a good example would be like if you want a spinning crank kick twice because you have the chi for it uh, you could spin and crank kick and then expel harm and then spin and crank kick again assuming you like for some reason didn't have energy to be able to do it again so i expel harmed here to get myself to one chi you can't do this to two chi because the second that the fight would start it would just go under one chi so you use expel harm here get it on cooldown about at like 10 seconds on the timer and then when you pull at one you want to use chi burst you want to pre-cast it um this is going to hit the boss and then this is instantly going to give you up to two chi if you are in like mythic plus like a boss or something like that and you can't you don't have the luxury of being able to precast expel harm and chi burst uh, you could just instead run in tiger palm and then fist of the white tiger basically the goal here is to just get to five chi prior to popping your cooldown so you see i run in instantly fist of the white tiger so that i'm at five chi the reason you want to be at five chi is because right here i'm about to pop my cooldowns and you don't want to have to waste globals during your cooldowns Pressing abilities that don't do a ton of damage, particularly being Tiger Palm, Piss of the White Tiger, etc. You want to be able to just instantly start doing your abilities and then generate Chi whenever you need to. So what I'm going to do here, first you want a Zwen, and then you want a Weapons of Order. The reason you Zwen first is because Weapons of Order, you get more value out of it. Uh, however, if you want to swap in, in which order, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, again, I would recommend having a weak or for Weapons of Order. So I use when weapons of order, and then you're going to immediately use your storm with wind and fire. You want to make sure, by the way, storm with wind and fire is not on uh, GCD. So I could have weapons of order and press uh, storm with wind and fire faster so that it was there immediately. But I'm globaled anyways for um, rising sun kick. So I guess waiting actually doesn't really matter. And then you want to make sure to press it a second time to make sure that your spirits fixate. Um, the reason for this is because you have a conduit that increases the damage they do after they fixate. But also, generally speaking, you just want them to attack the similar, um, the same target. Um, if I didn't do that, they would probably run off to these target dummies over here. But uh, that's more of an AOE thing. I'll talk about that more when we get into AOE. I'm going to pop my spirits. And then first global, I'm going to Rising Sun Kick. Rising Sun Kick does most of your damage in single target. And it's on pretty short cooldown during um, during Weapons of Order. But also, its cooldown also gets hasted. Um, and when you use when you have a lot of haste because of your legendary. I'm also using Anima Battery. Um, you don't really want to use Anima Battery, but because of this, this is going to cause me to overcap on energy a little bit more, but it looks a little... I guess it'll show the rotation with how it would look um, 
with lust, but the more haste you have, the more energy you're going to generate per second. That's not as relevant. Uh, so what you want to do is you want a Rising Sun Kick immediately. The reason for this is just, like I said, it just does a lot of damage and it gives you this buff from Weapons of Order where it causes your other abilities to cost less chi. So immediately after that, I'm going to Tiger Palm. The reason for this is that I hit 100 energy and I'd rather just Tiger Palm real quick so that I have the chi and so that I don't overcap on energy. The reason that you don't want to overcap is because uh, sometimes you'll run into scenarios where you actually don't have enough energy to spend. So if you're about, if you're at a hundred or you're about to overcap, you want to spend that energy, assuming you're not going to overcap on chi that is, you want to spend that energy uh, basically just so that, that you don't have to spend it later and so that you don't uh, run out of energy later. So I Tiger Palm there. That's, I only got overcapped really because I had um, Zwen up and because of my anima battery. But um, if you don't overcap, you pretty much want to instantly Fist of Fury like I do here. One thing about Fist of Fury is that when you have your spirits up, you want to cancel it with an ability. You don't want to cancel it with a channeled ability such as Spinning Crane Kick or such as um, expel, uh, Chi Burst rather. You want to cancel it with something that is instant cast. The reason that you cancel it in the first place, one, Fist of Fury doesn't do a ton of damage. But two, your two spirits are already going to be casting Fist of Fury. And you canceling it is basically just so that you can get more uptime on other abilities yourself, but your spirits continue to cast them. They only don't continue to cast them if you use a channeled ability such as Spinning Crank Kick or such as Chi Burst. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cancel it with Whirling Dragon Punch. Whirling Dragon Punch by itself does a lot of damage and that's what you'd want to use anyway. That is part of the priority. I'm going to Whirling Dragon Punch and then as you can see my damage is going to start to ramp up here. Then what I'm going to do, you can see my Rising Sun Kick is about to come on cooldown. But come off cooldown rather, but I'm over capping on energy. So I'm gonna use a tiger palm here. And then I'm going to, I believe I blackout kicked because my rising sun kick wasn't quite available yet. So I blackout kick just as a filler, and then I rising sun kick uh, right after the blackout kick, just because it's pretty much the only thing I have. And then here, since I don't really have any other abilities to do, I'm just going to be using blackout kick as a filler, especially with the rising sun kick buff, just to try to get more rising sun kicks and more fizz of fury in this window. So you see I'm just gonna blackout kick. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick. Right here, I use Expel Harm. Um, the reason I use Expel Harm, I believe, what, what did I do here? I Tiger Palmed right there, Blackout Kicked, and then I use Expel Harm to get myself one cheese so that I didn't have to use the Tiger Palm there, and then I could just Blackout Kick again. If I use the Tiger Palm, I would have then overcapped, so it was better to use Expel Harm here. So then I Expel Harm, and then as you can see, my Rising Sun Kick is now off cooldown, so I use my Rising Sun Kick. I got a Dance of Chi G proc. Dance of TG does a ton of damage, um, but what I did here is I Fist of Furied because it came off cooldown. I probably would have rather used Dance of TG because it was towards the end of my um, my spirits, and that's just going to do more damage than Fist of Fury, and then I could have saved my Fist of Fury for afterwards. Um, something to note about Fist of Fury canceling, it is, it's only ever worth doing if you have other abilities that are worth pressing that are higher priority than Fist of Fury, and if it is better to just like, for example, I have a Rising Sun Kick available, I have a Dance of Chi-Gi cast available, I have Whirling Dragon Punch available, and you only ever cancel it when you have Spirits. If you don't have Spirits up, you don't cancel it because it's not you're not getting the benefit of the damage. You're pretty much using it and then not getting any damage out of it, and that's not worth it. So what I do here, I Fist of Fury. I canceled it a little bit late with a Blackout Kick. Um, I think I tried to cancel it with Tiger Palm, but that's not actually a thing that you can do. You want to be able to cancel it with Blackout Kick because that's instant. And then ideally I would have um, I would have instantly used uh, my Dance proc. For some reason, I refreshed my Rising Sun Kick buff. I shouldn't have done this. I should have just instantly used my Dance proc because this just does way more damage than everything else. But for the sake of the video, I was just trying to use Rising Sun Kick just because in my head I was like, oh, well, Rising Sun Kick, I want to be using that on cooldown. But in the scenario, using my Dance proc was more worth it. So we're about to run out of our CDs here. Um, if you're in a pure single target scenario like in Raid, what you want to do with the second SCF charge is to use it immediately when the other one falls off. The reason being is that you still have a little bit more uptime on your Weapons of Order. I believe I have about 10 seconds here. And you're just going to get more value out of it uh, anyways. But you can also stagger it and wait. You pretty much just always want to make sure that you have an SCF charge available for your next Zwen and your next Weapons of Order. So. If I use this SCF charge here, then I pretty much have to wait 
until the next weapons of order and next win. But if there's like ad spawning or something, instead of using this uh, second charge towards the tail end of your CDs, you can wait. But if this is pure single target like Shriekwing or something, uh, right here I would just use another another SEF and then I would continue into my rotation. So here I use my dance proc, rolling dragon punches coming off cooldown, I'm going to use that. Uh, I delayed it a little bit there. I shouldn't have delayed it, I should have just instantly used it um, instead of pressing what I do right here. Right here I press tiger palm, I guess I was fine because I was about to overcap. I press tiger palm and then I blackout kick. So I rather would have just rolling dragon punched and then and then use rising sun kick. And then here, I'm just weaving in abilities. I'm using expel harm for chi, and then I fist of fury. I didn't cancel there because I didn't have a, I didn't have spirits. And then you just use, you just use everything else on cooldown when you need it. So for example, if I were to keep going here, I would use my dance proc, and then I would probably tiger palm, and then I'd blackout kick, and then I would probably like chi burst because I don't want to overcap on chi. Yada yada yada. You just follow the priority list. Now we're going to talk about AoE. AoE is very similar, however, the main difference is that you just use Spinning Crank Kick more. I would have a way to track your Spinning Crank Kick buff. Uh, basically, the more targets that you hit with a Blackout Kick or a Rising Sun Kick or a Tiger Palm, it is going to give you a buff that increases the damage done of your Spinning Crank Kick. Um, this is very powerful and it scales well with your Conduit, so I would make sure to have a way to track this, or at least keep it in the back of your head that you want to be optimizing this, and I will, uh, I'll show you guys how to optimize it in this video. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm not doing the expel harm thing because I'm assuming that this is like a mythic plus scenario. I'm just casting a chi burst here. Um, if you don't chi burst, if you don't have the luxury of being able to precast, again, what you could do is just roll in tiger palm, fist of the white tiger. Basically the same thing. You just want to get the five chi here. Um, chi burst will generate two chi if there's more than one target, but on just one target, it is only going to generate one chi. But since I know this is multi-target, I chi burst and this is going to give me the two. And then I'm going to fist of the white tiger here. And then I'm going to pop his one pop weapons and pop my spirits one thing that i'm going to do here is instead of instantly fixating my spirits i'm going to rising sun kick and then i'm going to fixate the reason for this is that if i were to instantly fixate i would not get the uh, rising sun kick buff up to uh, three stacks here when i use my uh, when i use my rising sun kick immediately after using my rising sun kick i'm then going to fixate them and then i'm just going to go into my fist of fury cast and then I, just like in single target i'm going to instantly cancel my fist of fury cast and then and basically what you want to do is you want to use spinning crane kick as much as humanly possible but you always want to use a rising sun kick on cooldown because it reduces the chi cost of spinning crane kick so you can basically get more kicks out as a result of that so what i'm going to do right here is after my after my whirling dragon punch i'm only at one chi so i'm going to tiger palm i tiger palm a different target to get another stack of the buff here and then i'm going to spinning crane kick because that's going to do a lot of my damage and then after my spinning crank kick, I used what I use here. After my spinning crank kick, I use a rising sun kick. And then I got a dance proc. That's really good. I'm going to use my dance proc. And then I tiger palmed um, another target to get another stack of the buff. And then I spinning crank kick. And then right here, I use expel harm because I didn't have particularly a ton of uh, energy here. So I expel harm to get myself another chi. And then I instantly use my spinning crank kick. And luckily, I was able to do this fast enough. Um, because I was tracking my weak aura and I knew that I could uh, get another spinning crank kick in. I get another spinning crank kick in and then I tiger palm immediately before my rising sun kick comes back so that by the time I use my rising sun kick, now I'm at, uh, now I'm at, uh, what is this? Now I'm at three chi and then I can just spinning crank kick, tiger palm again, spinning crank kick. Now Fist of Fury is back up. I use Fist of Fury. Um, yeah, I use Fist of Fury and then I instantly cancel it. I should not have canceled it here because my spirits ran out and I wasn't paying attention that my spirits ran out. Uh, again, if you need like giga burst AOE, you can use your second charge. However, if this is a mythic plus, I would use one charge per pack and I would try to just always again, make sure to have your SEF charges available for new packs. So then you just continue into the rotation. Um, it's basically the same thing outside of weapons of order. However, spinning crank kick is just going to cost more chi. Um, and that's basically it. You just Tiger Palm, Spinning Crane Kick, Spell Harm, Spinning Crane Kick, uh, Fist of the White Tiger, Spinning Crane Kick. The only difference is that you don't want to be using Rising Sun Kick unless it is to enable the use of Whirling Dragon Punch. So you would basically use it every second cooldown of itself, but it depends on how long the cooldown of uh, Fist of Fury is. The reason for this is that Rising Sun Kick doesn't do a lot of damage. 
The only reason I was using it with my CDs is to get the chi reduction cost. But outside of Weapons of Order, you only ever use it to enable the use of Whirling Dragon Punch because that does a lot of AoE damage. But by itself, uh, Rising Sun Kick doesn't do very much in AoE. You would much rather just spend that chi on a Spinning Crank Kick cast. Depends on the targets, um, but Spinning Crank Kick, I believe, takes Pryo over Rising Sun Kick in just two targets. And then that's when you would start using uh, Spinning Crank This is the damage of that pull. As you can see, the vast majority of the damage is Spinning Crank Kick, um, especially because I, I believe I got two Dance procs um, when I was doing this. As you can see, Rising Sun Kick didn't do very much damage. The mass amount of it is Spinning Crank Kick. Spinning Crank Kick is just absolutely insane right now. You can also see that Fist of Fury didn't particularly do a ton. It didn't do an insignificant amount of damage, but it didn't do a lot of damage. And that's one of the main reasons that you cancel it. As you can see, Whirling Dragon Punch, for the fact that I only cast it two times, it did okay. It doesn't do a lot. Um, I guess it just never really... Yeah, I didn't really get many crits out of this, so that's why I didn't do a whole lot. But um, my Spinning Crank Kicks are the vast majority of your damage and Zwen also does a lot of aoe damage as well so hopefully this video helped um i know that this wasn't the perfect way to explain this but there's a lot when it comes to windwalker monk so hopefully at the very least this video helped and you now know how to do the rotation what the priority of abilities are um let me know down in the comments any feedback and if you have any questions please feel free to ask below of course links of all the written guides will be in the description thank you guys so much for watching uh if you like the video please make sure to drop a like and i'll see you guys later Bye.